Welcome, welcome, and thanks for uh, joining us for the uh, next in the uh, Admiral Markets webinar series of uh, Trading Spotlight. And today we're going to be talking about how to create a simple price action trading plan. Uh, my name is Paul Wallace, and uh, thank you for uh, for joining us. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I'm going to talk about what is price action. I appreciate, as always, we have a, a wide range of experience in the room from traders who are completely new to experienced traders. So we will touch upon that in a way that hopefully everyone can uh, sort of get some uh, uh, value out of it. We'll talk a little bit about what role does it play in your trading plan. Talk about a couple of very simple price action trading strategies or trading setups that you can use as triggers. Uh, and we'll talk about, well, actually, how do we trade and how do we actually sort of build a little simple price action trading plan? And then if there's time at the end, we'll have a quick check of them on uh, live markets. As I said, thank you for uh, for joining us. Please, as I said, stay with us till the end. As I said, we'll be looking at them on live markets. If you're joining us on uh, on YouTube or if you're joining us here, please feel free to uh, sort of uh, ask questions or uh, sort of drop comments there. We, uh, we really uh, enjoy the uh, interaction. We're very happy to try and answer uh, your questions and your uh, uh, take on board your kind of your own thoughts and stuff. And we, as I said, we really enjoy having you here to, uh, to join us for our sessions. So uh, about me, ladies and gentlemen, if you, well, if you don't know, if you're joining for the first time, my name is uh, Paul Wallace. I'm a, a trader, analyst, and coach. Um, I've been trading for a good few years now, and I've had the uh, uh, the sort of the, the joy and the uh, the challenge of uh, trading for both hedge funds and high net worth clients. And uh, you know, I've coached traders for a call across the world, from uh, uh, traders sort of operating at tier one banks down to a complete new beginner. So, lots of uh, experience there that I'm happy to share with you during this uh, trading spotlight uh, uh, webinar series. Primarily for my own trading, I look to focus on FX indices and commodities. Uh, for my own view, when I'm trading sort of swing and position trades, I'm primarily a trend trader. Uh, and when I'm doing intraday trading, I'm looking to be a mean reversion trader. If you're not really entirely sure what uh, what those actually means, well, please uh, keep with us because uh, as we go through this trading spotlight webinar series, we'll be talking about uh, trend trading and mean reversion traders in uh, upcoming webinars. But, you know, as always, we're here, uh, you know, as Admiral Markets, uh, uh, as you can see there, you know, we're uh, Admiral Markets, are a Forex and CFD broker with over 8,000 financial instruments with offices in uh, over 20 countries. So there's uh, global expertise with local support. We are uh, regulated uh, and authorized across uh, yeah, a wide range of uh, entities. Uh, and we can see there that we have very competitive spreads on the, uh, the most major of uh, trading instruments. As you can see, there, 0.6 pips for euro dollar. 0.8 pips for the DAX 30. And uh, Admiral Markets also provide the uh, popular trading platforms MT4 and MT5, uh, and also with the Admiral Markets Supreme Edition plugin. If you have any questions about Admiral Markets, please get in touch with the account representative and they'll be very happy to uh, sort of take your questions. So, Let's all talk about a price action trading plan. As I said, I know that we have a wide range of experience in the room. Some people will know what price action is. Some people will be, have experience of trading markets using a price action as your, uh, as your main sort of form of analysis and execution. But for those of you who are completely new to trading, you know, when you hear people talk about price action trading, what do they mean? Well, it's actually just a, a very basic means of market analysis using price movement over time. Quite simple, all right? It is popular with both retail and institutional traders, despite it being quite simple. Sometimes people uh, think that it has to be very complex to be able to make trading decisions, whereas actually I can tell you from years of experience that actually sort of uh, uh, less is more, the sort of the simpler and the easier it is, the sort of the, the generally the better the trader becomes. We all have uh, a sort of a... We all have a, a human sort of need to overcomplicate things, and, and I, I include myself in that uh, in that sort of uh, crowd as well. I've had to to learn how to sort of uh, keep trading as simple as possible. And price action trading is a, is a very very simple, easy way to sort of uh, uh, analyze and trade markets because really we're just analyzing the change in prices over time. That is the price action. 
So what we're looking at is, you know, we're typically focusing on the price action over the last three to six months, but we will also be respecting of sort of a longer term time uh, price movements. And as you'll find out, sort of levels of support and resistance, they all sort of play a particular part. But, you know, we're going to talk about it in more depth and I'm going to hopefully share with you, you know, what it actually means and how we can utilize it in our, in our own trading. And hopefully you'll be able to go away and sort of take away and, and have a very simple sort of uh, uh, tra price action trading plan to operate with from tomorrow. For those of you who are, uh, you know, uh, sort of interested in thinking, well, you know, is it actually different from technical analysis? Well, actually, I would view price action as a form of technical analysis. Um, however, its main focus is on the change in price action. Okay, the quite simply, the price is the price. Okay, that price reflects everything that is known about that market. You know, in that particular moment, whatever that price might be at that day. And remember, it's discounting sort of you know future earnings or uh, future uh, opinions and biases. It is reflecting all of the kind of psychology that's in the market at that moment. What it does in terms of price action is it ignores the use of indicators. So lots of uh, traders like to use indicators, okay, whether that be the MACD or the RSI or moving averages or Bollinger Bands, et cetera. It actually strips all of that away. And, and the thing people maybe forget is that indicators are based on secondhand values. And I appreciate you may not understand that, but hopefully in a couple of slides time, I'll explain that to you in a, in a sort of a, in greater depth. So it could be said that price action is, is a very clean, pure form of technical analysis because price action traders are solely concerned with the data that market generates about itself, the price, that's it, as simple as that. But what it also does is as you learn to read that, price gives us a good insight into the psychology of the market. What I talk about with uh, some of my own uh, sort of traders and clients that, uh, that I know, but uh, it's a case of uh, think of it like uh, trying to learn to read a sheet of music. If any of you ever learned to sort of uh, play an instrument or learn to read music when you were young or, or as an adult, you know, when you look at the sort of uh, the squiggles on the, uh, on the page, it's, uh, at first it's very difficult to sort of really understand them. It becomes, it looks just like a foreign language reading, trying to read a sheet of music. But as you get to learn to understand the sort of the different notes and their importance, well, then you start to be able to make sense of a sheet of music to the extent that once you become very practiced in it, well, then, you know, a sheet of music becomes actually a beautiful piece of music. And it's a little bit the same with looking at a, uh, at a you know, a price action, OK, that you might when you look at it first time might not really fully understand what it's telling you. But with a little bit of education, a little bit of application, a little bit of practice, you start to be able to make sense of some of the, the major notes, so to speak, and be able to start to turn that hopefully into a, uh, into a beautiful piece of music or a beautiful piece of trading in this case. And as we go through this uh, series and particularly this webinar, hopefully it will be able to help in terms of uh, being able to uh, give you a little bit of insight on how to, to do that. So uh, Vincenzo says price action is important, but a few indicators can help us understand aspects of price action that we'd otherwise miss. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, disagree with you there, Vincenzo. Okay, that's a, it's a fair point. But uh, for today, what we're going to focus on is, is purely price action. We're going to strip it right back to the sort of the bare elements. Okay, so we can uh, have a look at it. And, and there are reasons why we'll do that. And, okay, and I'll talk about that a little bit later as we uh, discuss elements of the sort of psychology that comes through in, in price action trading. So, you know, for those of you who've completely new to trading, completely sort of uh, still, you know, just sort of working out what's, uh, what, what's going on with markets. Really, as I said, you know, price action chart, okay, is, is, as, it, uh, is as it says there, okay, it's uh, showing the, the various prices at which an instrument has been traded over a period of time, okay, and that time can be, can be anything. Although we'll be looking at sort of, let's say, longer term charts, okay, here, yeah, monthly, weekly, dailies in particular, of course, you know, this chart could be anything, okay? It could be a chart, a five-minute chart, a one-hour chart, a weekly chart, okay? It's about the sort of being able to see the various prices at which an instrument has traded over a period of time. And once you start to be able to look at the relationships there between price and time, that starts to give us an idea of where we may wish to do our business as a trader. 
So, you know, there are various types of charts, okay? And as I said, I appreciate some people are very new and might be able to look at it on the MetaTrader platform. That they might be looking at something as simple as a line chart, okay? And a simple line chart, as it says there, it just draws a line from one closing price to the next closing price. So, you know, if you're on a daily chart, the closing price every day, it just draws a line from those particular prices. And so when it's strong over time, you can see sort of general price movement of a, of a currency pair, you know, this particular currency pair over a period of time. So, you know, yes, it does give you a little bit of indication of where price has traded, but it's not telling you a massive amount, okay, in terms of deeper detail as to the sort of relationship that price is having with particular time, price is having with particular levels. So sometimes you see that, you know, I don't know if you open the newspaper or if you look on the, yeah, the news, okay, on the TV, and they, you know, they put up a, uh, a chart of what the, the Dow may have done or the Euro dollar, and it's normally a very simple line chart there, okay, which uh, for the uneducated just looks like a, 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 squiggle, on a uh, squiggle on a sheet. But as traders, we want to be able to sort of have a little bit more uh, information from that price, okay? We want to be able to, to sort of uh, help uh, identify the, you know, the kind of the, let's say, the underlying uh, uh, sort of dynamics of what's going on within that market. And so to help us with that, we could move on to using a thing called the bar chart, okay? Some of you will be aware of it. Some of you will be completely new. A bar chart's a little more complex because... Okay, where's the line chart just drew a line from the closing prices? A bar chart starts to give us a bit more information because now what we're seeing is four pieces of data, which as a price action trader will become your, uh, become sort of your, uh, uh, the sort of the, your go-to means, okay, in terms of the sort of the bits of data that will uh, run your life, namely sort of the opening price, the closing price, as well as the high and low. What you have is that you'll see is there'll be a vertical bar, okay? The bottom of the vertical in the bar, uh, vertical bar indicates the lowest traded price for that time period, whilst the top of the bar indicates the highest price paid. And what you'll see is that the horizontal hash on the left side of the bar is the opening price, and the right side horizontal hash is the closing price. So, you know, you can see that as a, as a crease of uh, the same thing on that euro dollar chart there. You can see the sort of, you know, indication there. Okay, there's a little bit more data being given to see, but realistically, it's those four bits of data that start to sort of rule your life as a trader. The OHLC, the open, the high, the low, and the close. And it's those kind of relationship between those four bits of uh, data and actually the sort of other data around there on the, uh, on the charts that starts to be able to help us make sense of what's going on in the, uh, in the actual price action. Remember saying a couple of slides ago, it's about you know, understanding the different notes, okay, on a, on a sheet of music. Well, it's also a little bit in terms of bar charts, and that's what we're going to go on to the candlestick charts. It's about understanding sort of the notes that they, uh, that they are playing, okay, and whether we can uh, utilize that in our own trading decisions. Uh, and then finally, what we'll have is candlestick charts, okay? Candlestick charts, you can, you know, you can read a great deal about them, okay? There's, uh, you know, Steve Neeson is the sort of acknowledged expert on them, and they've been used for hundreds of years. They came from uh, Japan, originally being used actually by rice traders to help them uh, identify the differences in price of uh, rice. But they have found their way into uh, electronic trading, okay? They've found a way onto our charts, uh, and they actually just give us just another layer of uh, information. They're still based on those same pieces of information, the open, the high, the low, and the close. But as you can see, the sort of body is, uh, is represented, okay? You can see the body is drawn there onto the chart. In this particular example, we have, you know, a green body for a bullish candle, a red body for a, a red body for a bearish candle. They don't have to be that. You can choose your own particular colors, but you will see quite often it's popular that uh, bullish candles might be sort of uh, green or blue and bearish candles might be red on color charts. But as you can see there, you know, the sort of uh, uh, what we have there is, you know, on a, on a, a green bar or a buyer, you know, bar, okay, a candlestick, the price is closed higher than it opened, okay, that means the price is bullish. Uh, and invariably on a, uh, a red or a seller bar, okay, that means price is closed lower than it opened on this bar, prices went down, all right? And, and this is kind of the... Uh, starting to give us the underlying dynamics, all right? We're, what we're trying to work out is actually who is in control of the market at that moment, okay? 
That's a, it's quite a simple question. We quite often overlook it, but for new traders, if you're just trying to understand who is in control of the market at the moment, that can help you start to uh, identify what the next move may well be and how you could perhaps position yourself. So just hold on to that thought. We're going to come back to it in a, uh, in a slide or two's time. So, you know, this is just a very basic candlestick chart, okay? This is the, uh, you can see here, it's up on the top left. You can see it's a gold chart, it's on the monthly chart, okay? Uh, and in this particular case, I just have the, the white candles as bullish and the, uh, the black candles as uh, bearish. But, you know, it's just a, a case of, you know, new traders may still look at that and say, you know, Paul, I, I don't really understand what's going on there, okay? There just seems to be a lot of white and black squiggles. Have no fear, ladies and gentlemen, as we go through the rest of this uh, webinar. Hopefully, we'll start to put a, uh, just a, a couple of little bits of uh, education and information your way that will allow you to start to, start to make sense of uh, these charts and how you can utilize them in your own trading decisions. So, what we're going to look about is, you know, as we start to identify how we can start to trade price. Well, in this particular, uh, in this particular sort of slide here on the far right, you can see what's called a castle a classic candlestick pattern, which is called a hammer, or maybe some people will call it a, uh, a basically a low test bar. Some people call it a rejection candle. Some people call it a pin bar. The label isn't necessarily that important. What is really important for us to understand is what actually happened for this candlestick to form, okay? And who is in control? So if we look at this candlestick here, you can see where the candle opened. Let's use our drawing tools as always. That always uh, helps, doesn't it? Let's bring up the price open here, okay? And let's just say this is a daily chart. The price opened here, that's, that's what we can see. What actually happened is then we can see that during the session, okay, during the day is that actually the sort of sellers took control of the price and they pushed it lower. They kept pushing it lower. It's pretty strong sort of, you know, the sellers were in control at that time. But then what happens is price reaches a level, okay? And that level could be for many, many reasons, okay? Price reached an area where the buyers were looking to actually to step in and they did and they basically sort of drove price all the way back up. They drove price prices, you know, as the day's going on, the buyers are coming in, they're buying, they're buying, they're buying, and they keep buying. And in fact, actually, they take price past the actual uh, uh, price we open on in the day. And actually, as we move up, we can see that price actually closed on the high of the day. That's where we close. So, you know, when you're looking at that and thinking about it, the question you're asking is when that happened, it, who is in control of that instrument at the moment? Who's in control of that market? And that's the question I just want you to, to take on board for this sort of first moment, okay? We need to sort of, you know, just understand who is in control of the market at that moment. That moment closed, okay? A price closed higher than it opened, okay? It's a green bar if you've got candles on, you know, and in that particular case, the buyers are in control. Okay, regardless of the actual price pattern, we just want to understand at this particular starting phase is who is in control at that moment. And at that moment, the actual, it's the buyers who are in control. And that's, that's just where we want to be for, the, yeah, for this particular moment. So I hope that makes some sense to you. I hope that gives you a little bit of uh, insight because uh, you know, I'm going to actually sort of try and uh, make you do a little bit of work now, ladies and gentlemen, because... We have a little sort of talk and look at about, you know, a little test for you all is to understand who wins the battle on each one of these candles. Okay. At the end of it, as the candle completes, who wins the battle? Is it the buyers in charge or is it the sellers in charge? You know, are you able to tell me? So if we look at this first one here on the, uh, the left here, there's left candlestick. Anyone in the room who could tell me, you know, who is in charge when that, co that candle completes? Is it the buyer or is it the seller? And that's what we're trying to, to understand. Okay, that's what I just need you to sort of contemplate and realize. Uh, and actually what we have here is that, you know, we can see that in that particular first case is that, you know, Sandra and Plowman and Alexi, okay, they're all saying the, the buyers and the, they'd be absolutely right. Okay, that's what we have in this particular case. That's because the price closed, okay? Price closed higher than it opened, okay? The buyers are in control. 
So on the next one, who do we think is in control? Who actually uh, ended up in control of the markets there? Okay, who won that battle? And Alexi and Kamal, and there's a few of you there sort of racing through Plum and okay, saying to the sellers, and yep, you'd be absolutely right, okay? Price closed lower than it opened, okay? So the sellers are in control. And for this particular moment, okay, that's all we need to understand, okay? We'll, I'll, we'll talk a little bit about the actual sort of um, the formations that they form. At the moment, first time, all I need you to realize and be aware of is who is in control, okay? Is it the buyers or the sellers? That's, that's all I want you to be. And so, you know, as you can see here, the next one, okay, you might say, I can see a few of you who uh, is already sort of well ahead of us, okay, telling us, but you can see, yes, the next one, it was the sellers in control. The next candle, it was actually the buyers in control. And some people might sort of sort of say, well, Paul, you know, there's an awful lot of wick there. And we can see, you know, that the sort of formation may not necessarily be terribly bullish. That's okay. We're going to talk about that, okay, in a couple of slides time. At the moment, I just want you to understand the first test is who is in control? Who won this battle? Was it the buyers or was it the sellers? And that's, that's what we're looking for. Hopefully you can see the next couple there, okay? They're pretty strong, there's a pretty strong sellers, okay, in control. And the next one, okay, it's buyers, all right? Buyers in control there. Here on the bottom left, we can see we've got buyers there, followed by sellers. The next one there, okay, hopefully we can see that it is it's buyers, okay, who said it's control. And, uh, you know, and Vincenzo makes a good comment there, okay? The color said who won, the wick says how much of a battle there was. And that's a, that's a really good way to describe it, Vincenzo. Thank you very much for that. It's a really nice, neat way to, uh, to sort of to think about what happens when you see, this, uh, when you see these uh, uh, the formations. We can see the next one, we had a, it was a seller. And the next one, yes, it was a seller. And then actually the final one, well, it was a draw, okay? Price actually closed at the same price that it opened which is quite often known as a, a doji, okay? It's a doji, which is a sign of indecision. But that's a, yeah, that's a different story for a different day, ladies and gentlemen. Here and now, we're just trying to work out who are the buyers, who are the sellers, or rather, who's in control. So, so you know, what we can take from that, okay, in terms of candlesticks, that they are easier to interpret than just a line chart or a bar chart. They're relatively easy to use. They also give you some psychological insight, which is uh, useful and what we're gonna look at in a few slides time. And what we find is candlesticks are quite good at identifying possible market turning points. Here's the thing to take on board, ladies and gentlemen. Candlestick patterns, as a rule, are reversal patterns. So there needs to be something for them to reverse, okay? There needs to be a trend for them to reverse. And when you see that happening at a possible market turning point, that just gives us a little bit of a confluence of events that makes us a little bit of a happier camper in our trade decisions. So as we said, you know, there's three different types of charts. You can have a line chart, but it's very basic, okay? It does have its uses here and now, but as a general rule, it's very basic. A bar chart, okay, a bar chart provides us that open, that high, the low, the close, okay? Okay, the sort of the data that is uh, the data that is the gold to a uh, yeah, to a price action trader. Okay, by being able to understand those relationships, that helps us get us a, a better insight into the market. And candlestick charts they provide all that, but also give us a little bit of a psychological insight into the battle that has gone on. And we will be using candlestick charts in terms of building our price action trading plan. So, how do we create a price action trading plan? Well, the benefits of price action trading is that, you know, we're going to be utilizing clean charts. It's a very stripped down approach to trading. And what that does and how that can help you is that it can make it easier for traders who are dealing with issues like analysis paralysis. So sometimes I'll get clients send me their charts, okay, and their charts, they're saying, Paul, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to, to trade the markets. I can't make a decision. I don't know whether to buy or sell. And I say, well, come on, send me one of your charts. Let's have a look at what you're looking at. And they show me and the chart has got something like 15 different moving averages on. It's got Keltner channels and it's got Bollinger Bands, okay, on there as well. Maybe other lights have just gone out there in my uh, 
in my office, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, and then what they'll have is they'll have the, the MACD, they'll have the RSI, they'll have the CCI, they might have the uh, uh, you know, awesome oscillator there on there as well. And so suddenly they have, you know, sort of, you know, 20 different indicators of one form or another on their chart. And actually all that they do is that all those indicators, they just serve to actually sort of confuse the trader. They actually just start to deal with a bit of analysis paralysis. There's just too much information. They can't make a clear uh, decision. And in fact, what happens is they end up doing nothing because they're just sort of overwhelmed by data or they make poor decisions because they're just, as I say, once again, overwhelmed by data and just make sort of rash knee jerk decisions. Whereas price action was stripping it back, was stripping it back as cleanly as possible so that, you know, that hopefully will enable traders who are, let's say, fear based traders to make it easy for them to make good choices about what, what direction the market's likely to, to be taken and where we need to be sort of operating, where we want to do our business. So how do we create a price action trade plan? Well, here's part one, ladies and gentlemen. We want to identify particular price levels that we believe price will react to and provide us with opportunity. So those price levels could be elements like support and resistance or big round numbers, okay? Human beings still operate in markets. They can be a bit lazy, okay? We can, you know, instead of looking at the price of something and saying, oh, well, sell me at, you know, 1092, they'll just say, sell me at 1100, okay? Just, we, as a general, it's a bias, okay? We will just sort of round it up to big round numbers. But that sort of provides opportunity for those of us who are educated traders because, you know, where other people are maybe sort of maybe being a little bit uh, lazy and complacent, that gives us an opportunity to sort of see, you know, where is there a confluence of events that we can actually take a good form to trade. So part one is, you know, we want to look at monthly, weekly and daily charts. And we just want to identify price levels where we think that will provide us with opportunity. Okay. Something like support resistance or big round numbers. Okay. And that's, you no, know, it's not, it's pretty easy. Okay. Pretty easy to, to, to determine. The second part was, well, we need some price action triggers. If price is at a level where we're interested, we need a few price action triggers. And that's what we're going to have for the next few slides, just to talk about a few simple trade triggers, okay? Inside bars, outside bars, pin bars. There are more, okay? And then we, you know, we may cover them in future sessions, but this is just about helping you, new traders, create a very simple price action trading plan that you can utilize and take away from today. So inside bar, we actually covered the, an inside bar in, you know, in a whole session, one of the recent trading spotlight sessions, you'll be able to find that on the uh, webinar archive on the YouTube channel or on the Facebook group page, but an inside bar is formed when the high and low of the bar is fully within the range of the bar before the preceding bar. You might hear sometimes they're called mother bars, kangaroo bars, not really that important, the name of it. What it has to be is that you know, think of it like an organism breathing, surge, rest, surge, rest. The inside bar is the rest. And as traders, we're looking to try and catch the next surge. So you can see here, the, the first three candles, okay, they are inside bars because the entire range of the bar is within the range of the bar preceding it. Whereas you can see this one on the far right, you can see the high of it, okay, the high of it went higher than the preceding bar. That means it's not an inside bar, okay, it must be within the range. So that's an inside bar in which we can look for and utilize on price action charts. Second one, okay, outside bars, or sometimes called engulfing candles, you'll quite often see. And an outside bar is formed, you know, it's sort of the opposite of an inside bar, okay? It's an outside bar is formed when the high and low of the bar fully engulfs the range of the bar before the preceding bar. And what it does, it must include the complete engulfment of the entire range of the previous bar, not just the body. Sometimes people just work off the bodies, okay, and they just they will just identify an engulfing candle just based on the uh, sort of the, the body engulfing the preceding bar. But actually, it's important for me, the way I look at them is that, you know, the entire range, okay, it must encompass the entire range of the previous bar. Engulfing candles, they don't happen as often as we like, okay, but when they happen at the right time and place at the end of trends, that's a strong signal, okay? And it gives us a, you know, a clue about the next possible move. And as price action traders, we can utilize that in our uh, trade plans. 
So, you know, there's a couple of simple uh, examples of, you know, we've got the first two are bullish outside bars, the second two are bearish outside bars. Uh, for me, what I like to see for outside bars or engulfing candles, I like to see big, strong bodies on there. You can see that they, you know, they're both, uh, all four of those examples, very strong, okay? The actual, the body is, it's big, it's strong, it leaps off the chart at you, it shows it's, you know, engulfing the, uh, engulfing the preceding bar. And that, that is what we like to see, okay? That's what we like to see. It's uh, sometimes you might get, let's just draw very quickly. Let's just say maybe, you know, maybe what we might see is that, you know, we can see that the range is here, but actually the body is, the body is just down here, okay? So the actual range encompasses the, the bar before, okay? But, you know, what I like to see is, you know, that that doesn't tell me, as Vincenzo quite nicely said before, okay, the, you know, the, uh, how it closes tells us we're in control, but the wicks tell us the, uh, the sort of the, the size of the battle. What I want to see is, you know, I don't want to see that, okay? I want to see nice, big, strong candles, okay, that leave me in no doubt as to who has won that battle, Okay. I want to say I have no issue about, I don't have to have any sort of worries or ambiguity about who has won that battle. I want to know exactly who has won that battle. So, and the final pin bar, okay, it, it's a very popular trading trigger. I'm sure you will have seen them all on your charts, as I said. Sometimes it's called a pin bar or a high test or a low test candle, a rejection candle or a hammer or a shooting star. I don't, I don't really care too much about what you wish to, to label it, what you wish to call it, okay? It's more about recognizing what goes into making up a good pin bar. And a good pin bar should have the open and close within the, uh, the body of the previous bar should have a wick that is hopefully two to three times the length of the body. We want to see a long nose protruding from all the other bars and the good pin bars stick out and are very, very obvious. That's, and that's what you'll see when you look on the chart. And you can see here, okay, you know, they've got, <coughs> excuse me, you know, we have small bodies, okay, towards, you know, very much with a bias towards one end of the, uh, the range of the candle with big, strong wicks beneath, okay? And part of the reason it is, is like it called a pin bar, as some people say it's because it looks like a pin, but also it's a bit like the, uh, the character from the, uh, the sort of uh, folk tales of Pinocchio. If you remember him from your childhood, whenever Pinocchio told lies, his nose got bigger and bigger, okay? And it's a bit like here on a pin bar because, you know, the sort of the nose is pointing this way, but actually, okay, it's, a, it's telling you a lie because the likelihood is, is that price will actually go the other way. We have a, uh, we have the, uh, um, we have the, the, the likelihood of price going the opposite direction. Okay. So wherever the nose is pointing, the likelihood is price, there's a better likelihood probability that price will go the opposite way. So uh, uh, Vincenzo, there is a uh, K Pinocchio is the character from Carlo Collodi's uh, anonymous tale. Well done on knowing the, uh, the writer of Pinocchio. Then Vincenzo, you get the, uh, you get the sort of a uh, teacher's pet award for today. Well done. So, so let's have a, a, a look at a, a simple plan. Okay. Price action trading plan should be simple and clear. Okay. You should be able to sort of take this away, put it next to you and start working from it from tomorrow. So, Look at your charts, identify significant levels off the monthly, the weekly and daily charts. Remember, we're looking at significant levels of support and resistance where prices you know, had a reaction in the past or big round numbers, okay? Big psychological round numbers. Look for a price action trigger at those such levels. So you're looking for things like an inside bar or an engulfing candle or an outside bar or a pin bar. There are actually other price action triggers, but for today, it's about just having a simple price action trading plan that you can take away. Our entry, well, your entry into trade is on the, on the break of the candle in the direction of our uh, trade with our stop loss at the other side of the candle. Never risk more than 1% of your uh, trading capital on a, on a trade. And actually in terms of a target, well, to, to, today we're going to utilize targets, which should either be the ability to make it two to one times your risk away or the next significant level that you can actually see on your price action charts. And, and really is a case of uh, rinse and repeat. And that's, that's what we're uh, particularly looking at. So identify significant levels of the, uh, of the higher term charts. Wait to see a price action trigger at such levels. Look to trade on the break of the candle, <coughs> excuse me, which will show stop losses on the other side of that uh, price action trigger candle. 
Never risk more than 1% on a trade and uh, look to target either two to one or at towards the next significant level that shows on your charts. And it is actually, uh, you know, it's actually about having just a simple plan like this that you can, as I say, rinse and repeat, and you can just execute time and time again. That is actually where we start to, uh, uh, to see progress in our trading. So we can see here, this is, uh, you know, we've got here price. Uh, this is the price action chart of uh, gold. It's the weekly chart here, okay? And, uh, you know, what we've got here is, um, you know, you can just see, I'm just going to try and move, if I can, hopefully move my uh, move my uh, video there a little bit just to be able to help you look at the, uh, the, the screen. So it's a weekly chart, okay? And uh, what you can see I've drawn on is, I've just drawn on significant levels, okay, of what support resistance and, and you know, lo and behold, let's get my uh, drawing tool here, ladies and gentlemen. Lo and behold, you know, we can see that, you know, there was a reaction price came here and there was a certainly a reaction there, okay? And uh, interestingly, that was at the, the big round number of 1,200 on gold. And you can see that actually 1,300, okay? And also at 1,400 big round numbers, we can see that there has been reactions in the past, okay? And that starts to, to play out, especially on the bigger time frames. What I'm kind of interested for is, <clears throat> excuse me, so what we can see is here is when price actually came up to the 1400 level. Well, you know, this price action trigger was here. This is, you know, it's a bearish pin bar. Okay. And we can see that price actually moved quite happily, nicely down to the next significant level at 1300. And yes, it went all around a little bit. And, and actually we had here a sort of a bearish engulfing uh, candle here before uh, before price moved down to that next significant level here, which is what we had here at 1200 okay 1200 the sort of price action then what did we have is we had you know an inside bar here okay <clears throat> excuse me we had an inside bar which can be used as a reversal pattern in itself it tends to uh, it can be used but what is actually of more interest here is when we actually get you know a the next candle here is a it's a pin bar here that is also an engulfing candle and outside bar and and if i'm honest that's actually one of my um, one of my simplest and favorite patterns that i will happily trade okay is a, a pin bar that is also an outside bar okay it's a combination and when you see that happening at a significant level at the end of a trend well then that is that's a nice particular sort of move that's a nice trigger okay and so in particular case, as I said, you'll be identifying, you know, we'll be getting long, okay, long at the, when price breaks and trades through the, uh, the kind of the high of that candle with your stop loss, the other side of it, okay, beneath the lows. And then you'd actually be looking to sort of try to trade towards either two to one, okay, which would be up towards here or up back towards the, the sort of the next significant level okay so and actually we can see that that you know that trend was ended here by what what well, we can see it actually was ended by a bearish outside bar okay we can see that that's what happened before price fell back down to sort of that 1300 level there so a little bit of a scruffy chart there now but hopefully what has get rid of it what you can see is that you know you know just taking a bit of time there's no indicators on there all we've done is we've got price and we've got some significant levels on there that's actually all so if you're struggling with your trading if you're struggling to make decisions well then you know try as an exercise just try stripping everything back down to the simplest you know the most cleanest cut uh, charts and that might actually help you sort of uh, uh, see the markets a little better and be able to make a, a better decisions or trade decisions for you. So, you know, to conclude, okay, as we said that, uh, you know, price action is uh, analysis. It's just a simple way of analyzing market using purely price action. It doesn't require or use any indicators. Now, some people might add a couple of moving averages or one or two indicators. Personally, I say to begin with, if you're struggling, strip it all back, okay? Just strip it all back and then add, you know, add as you see fit. Some may need one or two indicators. Others might be very, very happy just to trade with simple price action because it is a pure form of technical analysis. It allows you to trade off clean charts and you're looking for, you know, price action triggers at significant price levels. That's the base of a trade plan. That's what we've just been here to do today is to build a simple price action trading plan. 
We've got a couple of minutes left, so we'll uh, you know we'll go and have, take a quick look at the uh, the markets. But as always, don't forget to uh, join us next time on the uh, trading spotlight session. Okay, on Wednesday we've got uh, Marcus, my colleague Marcus, who's going to be talking about uh, trading with trends and price, uh, and including sort of you know why the trend and price are important, what role do they play in a trading strategy, and what to look out for. Okay, how do you know the trend is real? So remember from now from the Trading Spotlight series, we'll be at 2 p.m. UK time. That's on Wednesday, September 4th. And my next session will be next Monday at 2 p.m. London time also. You can, uh, if you're signed up, check your inbox for the webinar link. Uh, and also if you're watching this on YouTube, well, <clears throat> excuse me, then you can sort of uh, see it there on, the, uh, on the, the link there. You can also sort of, you know, as I said, see it on the YouTube channel and on the, uh, the Facebook, uh, uh, our Facebook group. You'll find lots of analysis and education on AdmiralMarkets.com. Uh, as always, if you want to contact us, you know, uh, you can email us at hello at AdmiralMarkets.com. You can find us on YouTube.com forward slash AdmiralMarkets or Facebook.com AdmiralMarkets Global, okay? And you'll be able to see this and all of the other Trading Spotlight uh, seminars, uh, webinars on there. Please, as always, please join us and sort of, uh, you know, comment and we, uh, we love the sort of interaction. So, you know, uh, hopefully you found that useful, give you a little bit of quick insight into how you can uh, use price action trading plan. We've got, we've got literally a moment or two left, okay? We'll just, you know, just a moment or two left. So if you bear with me, I'll just try and uh, shoot across to the, uh, uh, the sort of Admiral Markets uh, charts and uh, have a little look at one or two things just to, to finish us off. Okay, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you can all see the, uh, you know, you, you're back, John, you can hear me, you can see me, okay, you can see the screens, okay, hopefully you can see this is the uh, uh, Admiral Markets uh, um, MetaTrader 4 with Supreme Edition plugin. Um, what I've just got here is, this is pound against the, uh, the dollar here, I'm just going to move my elements around, okay. So, you know, we can see that, you know, you can see that that really has been in pretty much a, a bit of a downtrend there, quite a significant downtrend there since just uh, 2007. So for the last 12 years, really, you know, hopefully you can see that that has just been grinding its way down from highs up above uh, 2 one okay, $2.10, 2, 2 okay, I remember those days fondly, they were... There were great days to go to America on holiday if you were uh, if you're on the sterling. Now, not so much. So, but that's uh, that's uh, foreign exchange markets. That's the way they work. So, you know, as I said, remember we had a simple plan. Okay, we just want to uh, draw in significant levels. Okay, and uh, you know what I'm just doing here is you can see that very often that uh, you know those significant levels are you know not unsurprisingly they can also be um, levels that are. Uh, um, uh, big round numbers as well. I'm just uh, just drawing a few of these here. Okay, I'm just this is I'm kind of on the big big charts. Okay, the big picture we'll see there as we go a little bit lower. That'll be uh, um, being a bit significant. Okay, but you know you can just draw that in. Okay, across on those charts, just identifying those significant levels. Not unsurprisingly, you know we can see here. Okay, this <clears throat> excuse me, this is the uh, the the pound against the uh, the dollar. Now we're onto the weekly chart. We can see here, ladies and gentlemen, that, you know, that 120, okay, not unsurprisingly, a big round number, <clears throat> provided a little bit of a support there, Jordan. That was a flash crash after the, uh, um, uh, in about September after the uh, Brexit referendum. But we can see here, okay, on the weekly chart, okay, once price came down to 120 again, it actually formed an outside bar there, okay, quite a big, significant candle. Came back and tried to test it again. And once again, it performed a big outside bar there, okay, before price drifted its way north. And it actually drifted its way all the way back up to around about the 140 region here, okay. And actually, we just reversed there and we can see the price has drifted down. And here we are again, 120 again itself. And you can see, and what I'll be doing is suggesting you just keep an eye on that. Look at that on the daily chart to see how price reacts to that over the next coming couple of days and weeks. So uh, uh, unfortunately, we've uh, run out of time there, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I appreciate you joining. Thanks for uh, joining us. I hope you found it useful. Please, uh, you know, hit us with your, uh, with your questions and your thoughts. We, uh, we welcome them all. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you next week, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for joining us and have a great week's trading. Thank you.